learning Italian. From false friends to tricky verbs, here are 14 things you should never say to an Italian and tips on what you should say instead. Learning Italian isn't just about remembering new words and how to pronounce them correctly. You also need to learn when it's okay and not okay to say certain things. There are both cultural and social influences that you may not be aware of until you accidentally put your foot in it. But don't worry, it's all part of the learning process. Making a linguistic faux pas is normal when learning a new language, and making mistakes in Italian is the best way to learn. In this video, we'll explore the most common pitfalls students of Italian make. So here are 14 things you should never say in Italian and tips on what to say instead. Ciao ciao, mi chiamo Michelle, sono the Intrepid Guide, la vostra guida ai viaggi e come imparare le lingue. My name is Michelle, I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to language learning for travel using my 80-20 method. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell notification so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. So, andiamo, let's go. The first one is, know when you can say ciao. So even if you don't speak Italian, most people know the widely used greeting, which means both hello and goodbye. It's so well known that it's used in over 35 languages around the world, including Bulgarian, Catalan, Czech, Dutch, English, Finnish, French, German, Swiss German, Greek, Hebrew, Portuguese, and Spanish. What most people don't know is that Italian uses a formal lei and an informal tu, meaning you, way to address people. Native speakers will reserve their chows when speaking to someone they know well. This is usually friends and family. But when speaking to someone they've never met before or someone with social rank, such as a doctor, lawyer or police officer, Italians will say salve for hello or buongiorno for good morning and then arrivederci for goodbye. Don't translate literally. Now, whilst I personally enjoy translating Italian to English and use these often hilarious differences like Italian idioms to help me remember them, the Italian way of thinking about things and how the sentences are structured can be quite different. For example, Italians don't prendere una foto or take a photo, they fare una foto, make a photo. They don't avere colazione, have breakfast, they fare colazione, make or eat breakfast. Avoid common false friends. For all its similarities with English words, there are just as many false friends or false cognates in Italian to be aware of. Now, a false friend is when a word looks and sounds alike between two languages, but actually means something completely different. So here are six of the most common Italian false friends that you'll encounter. In Italian, educazione is used to describe your upbringing and manners, not your school education. The noun educato, masculine, and educata, feminine, translates to polite or well-mannered or well-behaved. If you want to discuss education, then the word you use is istruzione. Feeling annoyed? Italians say they are scocciato, infastidito, irritato, not annoyato, which means to be bored. When describing someone you have sympathy for, Italians don't say simpatia. This actually means that you have a fondness for them and like them. Italians say someone is simpatico, which is masculine, and simpatica, feminine, which means they are nice, kind, and funny. The Italian word for sympathy is compassione. And here's a fun fact. English kept the original Greek meaning of the word sympathy, which is to suffer together. Can you guess what the Italian word preservativi means? Well, it's definitely got nothing to do with conserves or marmalade. It actually means condoms. Now, I believe the word you're looking for is conserve for preserve, usually used in the plural. And then there's marmalata for marmalade. When you describe someone as being sensibile, you're not saying that they're sensible, level-headed and reasonable. You're actually saying that they're sensitive. Instead, use the Italian word ragionevole. When referring to an elderly person, instead of saying they are vecchio for masculine and vecchia feminine, which means old, the politically correct term is anziano or anziana. Only use vecchio when discussing objects such as a house or a book. You can, however, say things like un vecchio amico, which means an old friend, someone that you've known for a long time. But if you said un amico vecchio, that means the friend is old. Here are some other Italian false cognates to keep an eye out for. Brave. 
Coraggioso. Good, clever. Bravo. Canteen. Mensa. Cellar. Cantina. Camera. Macchina fotografica. Room. Camera. Cold. Freddo. Hot. Caldo. Fabric. Tessuto. Factory. Fabbrica. Fizzy. Crespo. Sparkling. Frizzante. Grass. Erba. Fat. Grasso. Horse. Cavallo. Bear. Orso. Library. Biblioteca. Bookshop. Bookstore. Libreria. Parent. Genitore. Relative. Parente. Pavement. Marciapiede. Floor. Pavimento. Polite. Educato. Clean. Pulito. Vacancy. Vuoto. Posto vacante. Vacation. Vacanza. Food faux pas. Italian cuisine is well known around the world and some communities have even made their own additions and variations to some of the most famous dishes. But that doesn't mean it's authentic Italian cuisine and found in Italy. When it comes to eating and drinking in Italy, there are certain things you just shouldn't do or you'll be met with an incredulous stare. Now when it comes to coffee, a uh, cappuccino is only something Italians drink with breakfast, so any time before 11 a.m. because it has milk in it. So don't go to dinner and order a cappuccino with your pasta. That's the epitome of committing a faux pas in Italy. If you're eating any type of pasta with fish or seafood, don't ask for parmigiano, which is the cheese, to sprinkle on top. This would be like mixing orange juice with milk, so just don't do it. Italians don't put pineapple on their pizza either, and they certainly don't eat spaghetti with meatballs. These are both Italian-American inventions that immigrants created when they couldn't find good quality tomatoes. Instead, they added meat, which was cheap and readily available, to the sauce in order to make it sweeter and thicker. You can certainly find polpette meatballs on the menu, but they are served either as a starter or a main course with potatoes, vegetables or beans, but definitely not with pasta. To learn more about how to order food and drink in Italy, you can check out my video which I've linked to in the description below this video. Know when to play it safe. Now I'm no stranger to foreign languages having multiple words to say what English can in one word. And since I started learning Norwegian, I've discovered it has four different words to say the verb to think, because according to Norwegians, there are different ways of thinking. Who knew? Now, Italian is no different. In Italian, there are two verbs which mean to play. There's giocare and suonare, but they are used to describe different things. When playing a sport, game, or with children, you use the verb giocare. For example, lui sta giocando a calcio. He's playing soccer or football. The other type of play refers to playing an instrument or when something emits a sound like a doorbell or an alarm. For example, Mi piace suonare il pianoforte. I like to play the piano. The other verb that is easy to get mixed up is conoscere and sapere. Whilst both of these mean to know, the former is used when talking about knowing someone. The latter is used when knowing a piece of information or knowing how to do something, like cooking or riding a bike. For example, lei non conosce lui, she doesn't know him. And Roberto sa cucinare bene, Roberto knows how to cook well. So over to you, have you mixed up any of these words before? Can you think of any others that you would add to this list? Let me know in the comments below this video. Got a trip to Italy coming up or want to communicate with your Italian relatives or a partner? Well, now you can learn Italian with my 80-20 method. Just click on the link in the description below to check out my online video language courses that will help you become conversational in Italian. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy language learning. Ci vediamo presto, ciao!